Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we will be continuing probability distributions. In the last few videos, we learned about discrete probability function and then continuous probability function. And today we are going to learn a very special case of discrete probability function and that is our binomial distribution. And before we start, we have to learn something called Bernoulli trail. So that's the first thing we are going to discuss today, Bernoulli trail. So there are two conditions. The first condition, it's a single trail. That means um, we will perform this experiment only once. And the result of the trail will be, you can see those arrows, there will be only two possibilities and we will label one of them as success and the other one as failure. I'll repeat, we will label one of them as success and the other one as failure. But note this, it has nothing to do with real life success or real life failure. So Bernoulli trail means a single trial and the result of the experiment will be two outcomes and the outcomes will be complementing each other they will be completing each other there will be only two outcomes and they will be complementing each other and one will be labeled success and the other will be labeled failure okay now remember there will be no other possibility Okay, so I'll give you an example. Imagine you're tossing a coin. In the standard conditions, when you toss a coin, there are only two possibilities, success or failure. I'll repeat, these are labeled as success and failure. In my experiment, I can call getting ahead as success in someone else experiment getting a tail might be a success so remember the result of the trial will be either a success or a failure and they are just labeled as success and failure okay and remember these are mutually exclusive outcomes okay now the probability of success will be called p and the probability of failure is called Q and P plus Q will be equal to 1 of course because they are mutually exclusive imagine we have a Bernoulli trail now let's imagine we are going to repeat this Bernoulli trail again and again and again and theoretically let's say n number of times independently and this gives rise to our binomial distribution so I hope the definition is clear so I'll repeat once more we have our Bernoulli trail Bernoulli trail means an experiment which ends up with two complementing outputs and we will label one of them as success and the probability of success is supposed to be P and the other one will be labeled as failure and the probability of failure is Q and we have p plus q is equal to 1. Now you imagine you repeat this experiment again and again and again theoretically let's say n times independently and that gives rise to our binomial distribution. Okay like in probability distribution function here we assume capital X to be the discrete random variable associated with the number of success. Then the probability that there will be X number of success is given by this formula. Some of you may be very curious how this came. So for such students I have a small derivation and it goes like this. So, how many times did we perform the experiment? Okay, n times and remember we did it independently. 
and what is the required number of success you can see over here and that is small x and that implies n minus x number of times we had failures I'll repeat we performed n number of times and we want the probability to be x number of success that means we failed n minus x number of times okay now let's think about the probability of success it is p each and every time it will be p so the probability of success will be like p into p into p into dot 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 of course x number of times and the probability of failure q will appear q into q into q into that will be n minus x number of times so take a look at this that explains our p power x and q power n minus x and now remember practically the success and failure will appear uh, it won't be in a pattern it can be like you'll get you'll get p q p q it won't be like that so there are lot there will be lots and lots of combination for this x number of success and that is given by our combination so the probability of x number of success is given by n c x t to the power x q to the power n minus x where x can take values from 0 1 2 up to n and you have to remember two more things the mean is given by np i'm not going to prove that over here and the variance is given by npq so it will be really nice if you take a sheet of paper and note all these things so Bernoulli trail and you repeat Bernoulli trail n times you end up with binomial distribution and the formula to generate probability for x number of success and its mean and variance okay if you want to understand this properly then we need one example so let's try one example so we are talking about light emitting diodes so a certain company produces LEDs and according to the data from that company or the consumers it's clear that three percentage is defective so someone got 10 LEDs of course they have selected it randomly from the production line and we are asked to find the probability that okay exactly two are defective at least three are defective at most three are defective and the expected number I hope you still remember what is this expectation if you don't remember I'll strongly recommend you watch the previous videos in probability and statistics okay and so let's start if you select an LED if you select an LED then how many possibilities do you have yeah defective or non defective don't tell me it will glow in red color right or yellow color no 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 I'm not interested in those things according to the data according to this question the LED will be either defective or not defective so that makes it binomial so I'm going to write the question here so that you can read the question anytime you want okay so let's start properly let x be the discrete random variable associated with the number of defective LEDs now look at this it's kind of funny in real life when you buy something you want that thing to work let's say you're going to put lights in your Christmas tree and you want a lot of LEDs when you go to the shop and buy LEDs you want them to work but look at this 
Here I am assuming capital X to be the discrete random variable associated with the number of defective LEDs. The reason I took capital X to be associated with defective is all the required probabilities are related to defective, defective, defective. So look at this. The success is getting defective LEDs. According to my definition, if you want you can define it to be non-defective LEDs. Okay, so like I told you before, if you take an LED, there are two possibilities. It can be defective or it can be non-defective and we know the probabilities. And now if you read the question further, yeah, so we are repeating this experiment again and again and again and again. I think that should be given specifically in the question. Anyway, you can assume they are they did it independently. Okay, so there it goes. X follows. So you are supposed to read like X follows binomial distribution, and we are looking for X number of success, and success means getting defective. And yeah, that's funny, but I defined it like that and n is equal to 10 and the probability of success is 3 percentage. Now we have our formula which we derived a while back and now I will plug in all those things n is 10, p is 3 percentage that will be 3 by 100 and that gives me this relation. So I will call it equation number 1. Now Okay, find the probability that exactly two are defective. So, we defined defective to be capital X. And the probability that there will be small x number of defectives is given by equation 1. So, let's just plug in 2 because the value of small x is 2. And that's it. You can take a look at equation 1. Now take a calculator and simplify. I will repeat once more. Capital X is associated with the number of defective LEDs. And look at the question. Find the probability exactly 2 are defective. So capital X is associated with defective. And by equation 1 we know that probability of small x number of items being defective is this. So the required probabilities, probability of number of defectives is equal to 2. And plug in x is equal to 2. Use a calculator, simplify, we have the answer. And if you have a habit of writing probability in percentage, you can multiply by 100 and make it percentage probability is out of 1. So if you multiply by 100, it becomes out of 100. And that means it will be per cent. Okay, now let's go on to the next part. So before we start, I hope you remember at least means greater than or equal to. So the required probability here is capital X greater than or equal to 3 and I hope you remember capital X is associated with number of defectives. So I wanted to read this from here. Find the probability that the number of defectives is at least 3. So find the probability capital X is greater than or equal to 3. Okay. Now, greater than or equal to 3 means it can be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, 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 no. I am not going to do all those things. So, I go for the easier method. 1 minus. I hope you remember from probability distribution function discrete case. In the previous videos, we learned this method. The total probability is 1. So, we do 1 minus. It's like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10. So, 
the required probability is on this side and the total probability is 1 so I will find this side and I will do 1 minus and the numbers less than 3 are 0, 1, 2 and now I will add them up it's pretty easy just take a look at equation 1 you plug in x equal to 0 then you plug in x equal to 1 and finally you plug in x is equal to 2 so here you can see I'm going to plug in x equal to 0 plus I will plug in x is equal to 1 and the final one 2 take a calculator simplify that's it and if you have the habit of writing it in percentage go ahead multiply by 100 and write it in percentage now let's move on to the last no not the last the third one okay we want the probability that at most and that will be less than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 3 means 0 1 2 3 and from the second part we already know this probability up to 2 so we write like this and I'm literally going to steal the answer from the second part plus I'll plug in 3 over here in equation 1 use the calculator and that's it wow 99 percentage so that means you can expect up to three defectives now the last one can anyone tell me what is expectation I'm sure you had been watching the last videos so what is this expectation yeah expectation is nothing but mean and when we discussed we learned that mean is n into p you don't have to do that hard work which we used to do in probability distribution functions in discrete and continuous you don't have to integrate you don't have to use summation you just use the formula n into p and that is approximately 0.3 that means it's clear 3 out of 100 okay now let's go for the variance that is n into p into q that is 0.291 and finally standard deviation if you know the variance it's just root under variance that is 0.54 so let's do one more question and make the distribution very clear so here we go so you can read the question and I'll strongly recommend keep a piece of paper and pen with you so the probability that Christmas Day yeah Christmas is on 25th of December and the probability that day will be a Sunday in a randomly chosen year is 1 by 7 okay so 15 years are chosen randomly find the probability that at least three of these days have Christmas day on a Sunday so is this a binomial related question or can you see the Bernoulli trail in this question yeah of course first I'll put the question here okay now let X be the discrete random variable in such a way that Christmas day is on a Sunday so look at this Christmas day can be in a Sunday or not on a Sunday so definitely it's a Bernoulli trail now once you read the question you can see that they're choosing 15 random years that means we are repeating this experiment again and again and again independently 15 times and one more thing the probability of success because I define capital X to be associated with Sunday success means it should be on Sunday and it's given it's 1 by 7 so naturally the other part will be 6 by 7 because P plus Q should be equal to 1 now we are repeating this experiment 15 times 
So the Bernoulli trial became a binomial distribution with n equal to 15. So we have capital X follows. How do you read this? Capital X follows binomial distribution with n is equal to 15 and p is equal to 1 by 7. And the probability formula. And let's plug in those values. n equal to 15 and p equal to 1 by 7. And q equal to. Okay, call it equation number 1. Okay, now. I want you to read the question properly. Find the probability that at least three of these years have Christmas Day on a Sunday. So the required probability is what do you mean by at least? Yeah, greater than or equal to. We already defined capital X to be associated with Sunday. So the required probability is there is more than or equal to 3 and that will be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 no, 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 I am not going to do all those I will go for the shortcut and that will give me 0, 1, 2 and you know what to do 0 plus 1 plus 2 and let's plug in the values 1 by 1 first I will plug in the values 0 and then 1 and finally 2 so when you plug in 0 you get 15 C 0 1 by 7 and then I'll plug in 1 and finally I'll plug in 2 now use the calculator and simplify that's it 36 percentage hmm, it's not that good not even 50 percentage so 36 point four five percentage so that's it my friends in the next video we will be discussing about another special distribution and that is poisson distribution so till then bye